Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Data Talks with Lauren. This is a show where we talk about emerging trends in the data world to enable people to stay informed. In last week's episode, we had a discussion on information gain, and that is decision trees using information gain. So we had a look at a few uh, steps that you can take while you're calculating this. And there was a quiz at the end of the episode, which if you haven't tried, please go and try. And the answer to the quiz is... So this week, we are going to discuss about linear regression. And I'm going to welcome my guest, Rita, who has been with us in the past two episodes to introduce herself, and then we can delve into the episode. Karibu, Rita. Thank you so much, Lauren. Wali Muhammad, back at it again. So, Rita, let's start with that definition of linear regression. Linear regression yeah. is an algorithm that provides linear relationship between independent and dependent variables okay. uh, to be able to predict future outcomes. Rita, the question today at hand is, uh, suppose you're given a data set that represents the relationship between the number of hours a student spends studying, mm -hmm. that is an independent variable x, mm -hmm. and their exam scores, dependent variable y. The data set is as follows. Um, calculate the slope m and y intercept b of the best fit line for this data set using the formula for simple linear regression, the formula being y is equals to mx plus b. So we're supposed to use the linear regression equation to predict the exam score for a student who studies for five hours. Um, let's jump to the calculations. Given the formula y is equals to mx plus b, we first of all have to calculate the value of m and b. So uh, m is equals to the number of variables in x, which are five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, multiplied by the summation of the product of x and y, dependent variable and the independent variable, subtract the summation of the independent variable by the summation of the dependent variable, divided by the summation of the entities, multiplied by the independent variable squared, subtract the independent variable squared. So also the formula to get b is the summation of y, the, in, the dependent variable minus m, which we got here, uh, multiplied by the summation of the independent variable divided by the number of outcomes. <clears throat> so uh, given our given data, x has 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, and y, the dependent variable, has 60, 70, 80, 85, and 90. And 90. So when we calculate the summation of x, uh, 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10, we get 30. And then when you calculate 60 plus 70 plus 80 plus 85 plus 90, that you should get 385. So x squared, x squared will be 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared, 8 squared, and 10 squared. This should amount to... 220 and then when you do x times y so 2 times 60 120 plus 4 times 70 that is 280 when you calculate all this should be able to amount to 2170 so when you substitute these values in the formula you get 5 5 remember 5 is the number of entries we have one two three four five so five times the summation of x y which is 21 70 five times 21 70 minus summation of x which was 30 times summation of y which was 385 divided by the number of entities which is five times summation of x squared which you got was to 20 minus summation of x squared which is 30 squared so you'll get it is negative seven seven hundred divided by 200 so our m is negative 3.5 uh so for b b becomes summation of y which was 385 subtract uh summation of x m first of all m 
which is negative 3.5 times summation of x, which was 30, divided by the number of entities, which is 5. So our b amounts to 98. So the question, uh, so our y becomes negative 3.5 x plus 98, our constant. So the question had requested if a student spent five hours yeah. uh, reading. So that means it will be negative 3.5 times 5 plus 98. So negative 3.5 times 5 plus 98 gives us 80.5. 80.5 is our final answer. You can either choose to represent the data in a graph where the y-axis will be dependent variable and the x-axis will have the independent variable. Mm -hmm. So when you draw the line where it hits the y-axis and the x-axis should also be able to give you the data you mm -hmm. need. So at the end of this episode, you usually get an understanding of advantages, disadvantages, and maybe even applicable areas of these methods, either supervised or unsupervised, that you're going through. So Rita, let's delve into that. Yeah, so for the advantages, mm -hmm. uh, we have, it is simple and easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, linear regression, as you have seen, it is quite simple and easy compared to the other models we have seen. Uh, this one was quite straightforward. Mm -hmm. And also another advantage is that it is easy to interpret, just like decision trees. When you draw the graph, you are able to also extract the details yeah. directly without having to do the calculations. Uh -huh. So as everything else, it also has disadvantages. So one of the disadvantages of uh, linear regression would mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. complex computations. So what this means is that linear regression is not the best algorithm mm -hmm. when it comes to complex computations mm -hmm. yes uh, for simple computations yeah you can use linear regression mm. another disadvantage of linear regression is yes. that it is quite sensitive to outliers mm -hmm. for example the data set you had two four six eight ten yeah if one of the digits was 20 mm -hmm. then the output will totally be different not All even right. close to the answer that we got okay yes mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. other than that we have applications yes so some of the applications of uh, linear regression will be yeah. one, metrology, mm -hmm. uh, another one will be energy consumption mm -hmm. patterns. So when it comes to metrology, this is where the weather patterns are able to be predicted okay. using linear regression because uh, the input required is not complex. Okay. Even for energy consumption patterns, all you need is a uh, consumption and yeah. the days that their consumptions were made. Yes. All right. So thank you so much, Rita, for sharing this knowledge on linear regression with us. Mm -hmm. um, I believe you learned something out of this episode. And uh, the quiz for today is as follows. So, Lauren. Yes. Uh, why did the linear regression go to therapy? We so so kuni was more than one Hey, why? Well, because uh, it was feeling too dependent and mm -hmm. needed someone to help it find a better fit in life. Oh my god. <laughs> so something to do with the X. But <laughs> Miss Awa. Y axis. <laughs> Watch out uh, for the next episode to um, gain more knowledge on this and to know the answer to this quiz. So thank you so much for watching. And by the way, if you know more, please contribute to these episodes because we are sharing what we know for sure. But it, it doesn't mean that that's all that is there. So if you have more knowledge, please share and uh, engage us. Bye.